Hello everyone, let's go ahead and get started. So in this video, you're going to learn that how you can create a SIFU application that is capable of showing you the driving directions from point A to point B. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm going to do is add a navigation view. Although we don't really technically need a navigation view, but I'm just adding it to make it look a little bit nicer. I'm going to go ahead and add a form because we will need two text fields, one for the to address, one for the from address. So let me go ahead and add those text fields. They're nothing more than a simple text fields. And I'm also going to go ahead and create a state variable representing those text fields with some default value so that I don't have to type in again and again. Now you can see on the preview on the right hand side that we have created a very small kind of a form which consists of two different text fields. It's actually loading as you can see. There we go. For the navigation title, we can go ahead and use the navigation title modifier and we can say directions. I mean, you can say anything you want, I guess, over here. Okay, great. Next thing we want to do is we want to create a button. So let's go ahead and create a button. I'm going to say at stack. I'm going to say spacer. I want to kind of like put the button in the middle and I will say search. And again, I'm going to put a spacer so I can see the button kind of like in the center. And eventually we will have all the different directions. So for the directions, you can put the directions anywhere you want. Uh, I mean, we can simply go ahead and put it over here, I guess. Let's say a list. And for now, I'm just going to run a loop. This is kind of like a placeholder, so it's not really going to display the directions, but this will be the actual placeholder that we have. Right now, I'm just going to show index. It will give us some idea that the directions will be shown right over there. Great. Now the question is, well, how do we find the directions? That's the main thing, right? So I'm going to go ahead and add a new file that will serve as a view model, and I will call it directions view model. All right, so now let's go ahead and get started with implementing our view model. We will, are going to go ahead and call our view model called directions view model, and this will be observable object. The direction view model will be responsible for giving us a direction. So we need to create two different functions to calculate the directions. The first function, which is exposed to the outside world, is called calculate directions, which are which is simply going to take in the from starting point of your directions to which is the ending point of the directions, and it is going to calculate the directions. The other function is get place mark by. That's the one that we need to implement. Because using this new function that we're going to implement, get place mark by, we can pass in the address that the user has typed in, and it is going to return us a CL place mark. And we need CL place mark because using the CL place mark, we can construct a direction from point A to point B. All right. Next, we're going to use geocoder. We are going to create a CL geocoder. The geocoder will be responsible for taking in the address and giving us a place mark. Now, if you look at the geocoder function, there are many different functions available. The one that we need is geocode address string. The one that is highlighted right now, that's the one that gives you a completion handler. But the one that we're looking for is the one that doesn't really give us a completion handler, but it will allow us to do this simply by using try and await. So let's go through this function. You can see geocode completion handler, geocode completion handler. And sometimes you can see that it's kind of hard to find these things. It doesn't really come up. Uh, let's go ahead and build the app. Sometimes you have to build it to get it to work correctly geocoder dot there should be an async one and you can see sometimes it's just hard to see hard to know that there is something that is there 
but here we go. So now if I go ahead and type a little bit more, I can see all of those different things. And the one that we're looking for is that it is with async. So that's cool, cool because we can simply pass in the address. And this is the async function, so we don't really have to use the closures anymore. This can blow up. So we're going to use try and await, and we are going to simply get the place mark. Since we are marking this with a weight, we have to make sure that we are using async. And since this function can also throws, we have to make sure that we are using throws also. So this is our function, which is going to be passing in the actual place mark. Now in the calculate directions, we can calculate the starting place mark as well as the ending place mark. I'm going to go ahead and say start place mark equals to try await, get place mark by, passing in the address, which is from. The other thing that we need is the to, so or the destination. Place mark equals to try await. Again, I'm going to use get place mark function, the one that we just used. Else, if there's something wrong getting the place mark, then, well, don't really do anything. Now, again, we're using try and we're using await. Uh, we have to make sure that this particular function is mark with async. So let's go ahead and do that. Perfect. Now we have both the place marks. Let's go ahead and implement catch or else it will keep on complaining. There we go. Okay. So now we have both these place marks, right? Start place mark and a destination or end place mark. Now we can use the MK directions request. So I'm going to go ahead and say directions request MK directions dot request. And you will see that in order to use MK directions, we may have to import mapkit. So let's go ahead and import mapkit. Okay, perfect. Okay, so next, after the direction request, we can also provide information that what kind of a transport type we're doing. Are we doing walking, transit, which basically means uh, buses and barts? I'm going to say automobile, so we're kind of driving. And the next thing that we need to do is in the direction request is we need to go ahead and set the source. So mk map item place mark, but this actually takes an mk place mark. So let's go ahead and put mk place mark and we can pass in the cl place mark, which is a start place mark. Using the same exact approach, we will be able to use for the destination. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and get the directions because that's what we need, right? mk directions passing in the actual request, which in this case is direction request. We will get some sort of a response from that if I go ahead and call this. So directions.calculate. You can see the calculate function is marked with async, which is great. We don't have to use the closures anymore. I can use try await since it also can throw. Next, it's going to, we're going to extract out a route. So from the response, dot routes because it may give you different routes. I'm just going to pick up the first one. And if it doesn't exist, we're not going to do anything. If it does exist, then I do want to apply or give it to uh, something called steps. Now you can put a route in there also, or you can assign the route. I'm just going to assign the steps for now. All right. Now, what is steps? Well, steps will be a property that we are going to be creating that will be a property of the directions view model. So mk route dot steps. And we want this to be published so that the view can update itself. And since it is marked publish, we need to make sure that when we are setting this property or assigning it, it is on the main thread. So I'm just going to go ahead and say main actor so that it is assigned on the main thread. Perfect. And this is it. So this is the code that we will need to get the directions. Now we can go ahead and jump into our content view. 
and we can see that where do we have to fire this. So I'm going to go ahead and say, first of all, create an instance, an object of the directions view model. So let's go ahead and do that over here on the top of line 15. Next, I'm going to say directions or VM dot calculate directions, passing in the from and passing in the to. But this is the async function. So you can't really call it over here without a wait. So here we go. We can await. But we can't await because we are not in the async context. So I'm going to mark this with task. Now, once we get the directions, the step variable or steps, it's going to get assigned. And since they are marked with publish, we can get the updated copy right over here. So let's go through the steps. I'm going to say vm.steps. We will get each step. And let's go ahead and display the direction in the property call instructions. Let's go ahead and run it. And we'll see that if we can get the directions, only the directions printed out or not. So if I run it, I'm already pre-filling out the starting or from and the to. Let's go ahead and click on search. And there we go. We got all the directions. This is pretty cool, right? We're able to get all the different directions from this particular location to the destination. Now, this is all great, but maybe we can make it a little bit better by assigning when to turn right, when to turn left, and all of these kind of things. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this with edge stack. And if I want to say that a particular thing is whether you have to turn right or left, we can always use system images. So this is just to show you that we can have a sign indicating whether you have to turn right or left. So arrow dot turn dot up dot right. Now if I simply go ahead and add that, then every single turn, every single direction will always say or show the image of right. You can see all of them are right. This is not correct. So what we need to do is we will go ahead and create a property which is going to return us a correct direction. All right. Or we will create like a small function actually. So I'm going to say directions icon instruction string. And based on what the string is actually saying, if the instruction dot contains the word right, then we will go ahead and return a special icon arrow dot turn dot up dot right. Now, obviously, there are other cases like if you are uh, going in a destination or if you have turned left or right. So I'm just going to go ahead and add all of those different things. And we can finally go ahead and use it right over here. Directions icon, simply passing in the direction by step dot instructions. And having done that, let's go ahead and run it again. And there we go. So now you can see it is displaying you some of the directions. And arrive at destination has a different icon associated with it. If you don't want to see the first one, that's kind of like no directions at all or empty. Then we can also make a check over here to make sure that we are not displaying that. So if the step dot instructions dot empty, well, if it's not empty, then you go ahead and display all of these different things that we're doing. Make sure that we arrange that. There we go. Let's go ahead and do the search again. And now it looks much better. So you can see that only with few lines of code, I mean, not much, we were able to calculate the directions between the input and the output or basically the source and the destination. And we were able to print out all of these different things in our uh, file over here in our list. Now, in actual application, you will obviously make sure that you're not assigning anything over here. Uh, I'm doing that because I don't want to type in over here some directions or, or the address again and again. 
all right so there you have it you have now created a direction tab using Swift UI. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses on Udemy. I have a lot of courses on Swift UI, Swift, Test Limit Development, MVVM, RxSwift, Combine, Core Data, Data Structure, Async and Await, everything you can imagine related to iOS development. So make sure to get the best of these courses. You can follow the link in the YouTube video, which will have a link to the discounted price on these courses. So make sure you utilize those. Thank you so much.